Hello everyone, I thought I'd just jump on here real quick and debunk Jean-Paul Sartre for saying this, nature is mute. I know, I can't stay away from this guy. I might have a problem. Now, nothing could be any further from the truth, and that's what Terence McKenna said, who replied with this. He said, nature isn't mute, it's just you, you're deaf. Please tell me that wasn't supposed to be clever. Right, and that's absolutely the case. Our senses have been shut down or limited to the myopic apertures of the five sense organs. The five sense organs? You have no idea how senses work, do you? They have their own cortices, not their own organs. Some senses do, like sight has the eyes, but a lot of them are just sensory receptor cells spread throughout the body. They taste, scent, touch, sight, and the old hearing as well. There's actually a scientific consensus for 11 senses, as this guy would know if he actually knew anything about reality. The ones he left out are pain, itch, spice, temperature, balance and acceleration, and kinesthetics. And those are just the ones there's a current consensus for. We know there are more, but neurologists haven't definitively pinned them down. There may be as many as 21. So before you go talking about how atheism is limited, maybe you shouldn't go limiting yourself to the scientific understanding of 2,000 years ago. What is consciousness? How can you actually see me right now? If we see with our eyes, how do we see our dreams? It's called the visual cortex, dummy. So what is consciousness? That's the question. No idea what that has to do with the senses or atheism, but consciousness is an emergent property of a decentralized neural network that results in sentient awareness, including self-awareness. Consciousness is nature itself. You are life itself. What sort of question do you think this answers? Everything is nature, and everything biological is life. You're not giving anyone any useful information. So here's the all-important thing. How can nature be mute? Because it has no communicative ability. Other than us, that is. We're part of nature, so nature is communicative through us. Of course, that's not what this spaced-out hippie architect is talking about. You are consciousness. You are life. You are energy itself. Again, he goes on like this for a while. All his mind, the universe is mental. Well, one of us is mental anyway. It's omniscient, omnipresent. It's absolutely everywhere in the universe. And how do we know that to be true? Well, one, you can contemplate and experience spiritual awakening so you can experience this a priori. So if you can contemplate something, it must be true? If you can imagine yourself to be a spirit, you must be a spirit? If you can imagine yourself to be a ham sandwich, you must be a ham sandwich? Check out the experiments of Wilhelm Reich, who clearly showed that if you just simply heat up inert materials like coal, iron filings and sand to insanely white hot temperatures and then cool them down, spontaneously all these life forms start to emerge. Oh yeah, the Orgon Energy guy. Didn't know there were still morons who took him seriously. What he's talking about here is the Bion experiments. The thing is, whenever another scientist was allowed to observe his results, the life forms that emerged were just contaminants like Staphylococcus. He had sloppy controls that allowed contamination from airborne bacteria. No one at the time took him seriously, and I gotta say, Adam is the first guy I've encountered who does. Now how's that happened? Because he had crappy controls and it got contaminated from ordinary, easily identified airborne bacteria. Whenever anyone else did the experiment with proper protections from contamination, no life forms were present. Well, it's because all his mind, the universe is mental. There is like an underlying framework, infrastructure in place here. And we are the physical manifestation of underlying conscious modalities and patterns. And off he goes again. How is it that a giraffe's neck is so long? Why do elephants have trunks? Well, it's because 
Evolution is the physical byproduct of amending desires in consciousness, right? So you think of something, the desire, idealism becomes realism. Oh, those leafy greens up in the trees, it'd be awesome if I get, and then before you know it, you've got a neck as long as a giraffe. So you have no clue how evolution works either. You cannot will yourself to have a longer neck. And even if you could, acquired characteristics aren't passed down to children and grandchildren. Also, it has nothing to do with reaching high foliage because giraffes largely don't eat high foliage. They eat at about shoulder height. There are lots of animals that eat high foliage, but only the giraffe seems to have done it by growing a long neck. Why? Because it's not about eating. In fact, the thickness and density of the neck needed to support such a height would make it detrimental because they need to eat that much more food to sustain it. After centuries of study, no one has ever been able to find a link between the length of a giraffe's neck and eating food high in the trees. Here's something that'll completely blow your mind. If it weren't already completely blown, that is. The real question is, why are giraffes' necks so short? And if you want to know what I mean, look at a giraffe when it eats grass or drinks water. Look at how it has to splay its legs out. It has to do that because its neck isn't long enough to reach the ground. You'd think that if it were about desire, they'd make their necks long enough so they didn't have to go through that inconvenience. But it does give us a clue as to what it's really about. It's not about giraffes having long necks, but long legs. That means that they can ambulate much more quickly than an animal of their size would otherwise be able to do. Also, being tall and skinny helps dissipate heat in warm clients where the giraffe lives. There are several other theories, including sexual selection and neck competition among males, all of which are more plausible than the eating high foliage theory, mostly because giraffes usually don't eat high foliage. But there's nothing definitive. But once again, we see that science has progressed way beyond Adam's level. So all is mind, and mind is sort of like this... Um, molder of clay. Matter is clay for the pot, but there must always be the potter to mold the clay. Matter is the substance, but there must always be the sculptor. So things of clay have a sculptor, and so God must exist because everything's made of clay? I don't get this one. Nature is mute. Nothing can be further from the truth. Terence McKenna is absolutely correct. Anyway, this is a debunked playlist. Yeah, I'm starting to think you don't know what the word debunked means. So thanks for watching, please hit like and subscribe, leave a comment, and go to donate.bogosity.tv to keep me doing what I do. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you.